Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to trade options on the Webull desktop platform. This video is gonna be mainly focused on buying and selling single leg options, but we'll also touch on spreads as well. I'll also mention that this is more of a tutorial on how to place the trades themselves, not necessarily going over the concepts behind the trading strategies. Now jumping right into the Webull platform, you can see that I'm currently on the customize page, which really is the way that I want it to be set up, how I wanna look at my page. And you can see right off the bat that I do have an option chain listed right here up at the top. I've got an order entry box down here in the lower left hand corner. On the right hand side, I've also got a chart for the stock that I'm looking at, as well as some key statistics down below, just because I, I like to know about the company I'm about to put a trade on. Now this page is all about personal preference. It's whatever information you find most useful, whatever information you want to look at. This is just the way that I like to have my platform set up before I'm actually going to put on a trade, the stuff I like to look at. But if you guys want to customize this, all you have to do is come up here to the top right hand corner and find that little briefcase icon. When you click on it, it's going to open up a window showing you all the widgets or all the tools that you could add to the platform. Right now you can see we're on the trade widget, which shows order entry, classic trade, orders, positions. If we went over to the general page, you can see we could add a watch list to this, we could add a screener. If we went to market, we could add stuff like index chart, net inflow and outflow. Again, it's really just what you find most useful. And to add these, all you have to do is click on it and it opens up the widget on the left hand side and you could move it to wherever you want it. Let's say I want it to be a part of this one right here, a part of my option chain. I could drag it right here and let go. What that does is it creates a second tab up here at the top right next to my option chain. So I could easily go back to options or go back to global. Now, if I wanted to get rid of that, I could simply right click on global and remove the widget from my screen. Now, if you're just getting started and you don't want to set up this customized page, you can always come over to the stocks page over on the left hand side. When you come to this page, you're going to see something that looks a whole lot like this, but it's probably going to have the chart page pulled up at the moment. From here, you can easily access the option chain by simply clicking options up here at the very top. It's then going to open up the option chain for the stock that you're looking at, and you can always come up here to the search box at the top, which probably is hidden right now on your screen. But if you click in there, you could simply change the stock to whatever we wanted to look for. Let's say Microsoft MSFT, go ahead and hit enter. And now we've got all of the key statistics for Microsoft. We've got the option chain for Microsoft and we can go ahead and place trades from here. Now that we've gone over how to customize the platform a little bit, let's go back to my customize page just so I can see how I like my template. And before we actually get started with how to actually place a trade on here, let's go through some of the tabs up here at the top. Now, right off the bat, you can see a little search box, which is where we're going to type in the symbol of the stock we want to trade. So let's say we wanted to trade eBay. We'll go ahead and throw eBay up there. E-B-A-Y, hit enter. And you can see that eBay last traded for $77.66 during regular market hours. It was down 1.07% today. After the market close, it has moved down to $73.56, down $4.10, over 5%. And I'd be willing to bet that's from their earnings announcement that was this evening. Probably wasn't too great based off that. But right below that, we can see some information about the actual options themselves. Right off the bat, you can see single right here in a drop down menu. That just means when we click on an option down here below, we just want to place one single trade. When we click on an option, we just want to buy a call or we just want to buy a put. Just one single options trade. If we wanted to create a spread, we could come here and select straddle or strangle, vertical, whatever type of spread we wanted to create. Now the one right next to it, 20 right here, that's the number of strikes we're seeing right down the middle of our page. So 20 available strikes. If we only wanted to see 10 available strikes, we would just click on that and go to 10. Right next to that, it says we're seeing both the calls and the puts. You can see the calls on the left-hand side over here, the puts on the right-hand side over here. But if you wanted to simplify things a little bit and you just wanted to see the available call options, we could just click on calls. We are now seeing the $73 calls, 74s, 75, 76, and so on. If we just wanted to see the puts, we could go ahead and click on the puts column. Now this is the $73 put, the $74 put, and so on. Right next to that, you can see regular, which just means we are seeing the regular monthly contracts, which looking down below for eBay, you can see that is the 19 November 2021 expiration. The weekly options, which are also checkmarked, are like the 29 Octobers, or the 5 Novembers, the 12 Novembers. And there is really no difference between trading the regular monthly contracts or the weekly contracts. The only difference you're really going to notice is that the weeklies typically have less volume on the contracts. The monthly contracts have potentially been around for years, up to three years in some cases. The weekly options have, generally speaking, only existed for five weeks in time. Using this 3 December as an example, that contract might have just got created yesterday. Whereas this 19 November, that could have been created up to three years ago. 
So it makes some logical sense that there's probably more people trading this standard monthly contract than this 12 November weekly contract. But that's really the only difference you need to be aware of on those. Now the quarterlies right next to that, which is checkmarked, is not really going to be for equity options. It's not going to be for eBay or Apple or Netflix. It's going to be more for the index options like the SPX or the Dow Jones. The index options themselves or even the ETFs will typically have the quarterlies, but no individual stocks are going to have quarterly options associated with them. Now, right next to that, that standard box that is checked just means that this option contract is representing 100 shares of the underlying stock, which is a standard options contract. If you had this non-standard box checkmarked right here, that would mean you could also trade the non-standard contracts, which means those contracts might not be representing 100 shares of stock. They could be representing shares of stock as well as cash, or they could be representing shares of eBay as well as shares of Netflix as well as cash. It can be very, very confusing. All non-standard contracts are different and they need a mathematical equation to go along with it so you can figure out how much they're actually worth. If we were to switch this to GE, I believe they still have some non-standards. We can go to them. And you can come down to the 19 Novembers right here and you can see that these are the GE1 contracts. Now, I believe that was due to the Wabtec spinoff. Uh, it was over a year ago now, but I believe this contract represents shares of GE as well as shares of Wabtec and a little bit of cash which makes trading these incredibly confusing, which puts most people off. No one wants to trade contracts that no longer just represent shares of the stock. And you're gonna see some pretty crazy wide bid ask spreads on these a lot of the times. So I would just generally avoid them. Just keep this unchecked. Just do not trade non-standard contracts. Now getting into the options themselves, let's get back to eBay for a second. They've got some more liquid contracts. If we look at the option chain itself right now, we can see the column headers up at the top. You've got theta, gamma, delta, implied volatility, and the bid and the ask for that option. Now you obviously need to have the bid and the ask so we can actually tell what this option is trading for at any given time. But if you wanna get rid of these columns or add some other columns that you find more useful, all you have to do is click on these three little lines over here, and it's gonna bring up a sub menu of all the tools you can add. You can see all of my items currently on the right, bid ask, implied volatility, and so on. But you've got a lot of other options to choose from, whether it be volume, maybe you wanna see open interest, you can see percent change, so how much does that contract move up or down today? Really, it's whatever you find most useful. Now, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. And now we can see pretty much all of the Greeks for each individual strike. Now, getting right into it, we can see these strike prices listed right down here in the middle. So 73, 74, 75, 76, and so on. The calls are on the left-hand side. The puts are gonna be on the right-hand side. You're gonna notice that the in-the-money options have this like light green shading in the background. The out-of-the-money options have like a grayish background. Whenever you wanna buy an option, all you have to do is click on the ask to buy it, and the bid to sell it. So for example, if we wanted to buy this $79 call, we'd go ahead and find the strike price right here in the middle, come over to the left-hand side, because that's where the call options are at, and we can see it's currently trading for $1.75 by $1.87. Since we're gonna buy the contract, we need to click on the asking price. As soon as we click on it, you can see that it highlights the contract we're about to trade. It says we're about to buy it. And if we look down below, we can see an order ticket has already been pre-filled out for us. We can see from left to right, we're about to place a single option trade on eBay on the $79 strike calls for the 29th of October. Again, it is on the call side. We're about to buy 10 contracts with a limit price of $1.87. Now let's say we only wanted to trade one. We'll go ahead and click on that quantity there, delete it out and type in one. Let's also say we only wanted to pay $1.65 for this contract. So we'll go ahead and change that $1.65. And we wanna make it good until canceled. So if it doesn't fill today, we'll try again tomorrow. If it doesn't fill tomorrow, it'll try again the next day and so on. But we are saying we only want to buy this $79 call if we can get it for $1.65 or better. All we'd have to do next is hit place order. And that's it. Now, I don't actually have any money in this account, so it's going to reject it. But that's all we have to do. Now, if we wanted to cancel this out, we'll just go ahead and right click on it and say delete order. If we want to do the exact same thing on the put side, let's say we wanted to buy a $74 put still on the same expiration, the 29th of October. We're going to find the $74 strike right here in the middle. Come over to the right hand side and see it's currently trading for 98 cents by a dollar and six cents. Since we want to buy this put option, we're going to go ahead and click on the asking price, a dollar and six cents. Just like before, we can see it pre fills the order ticket down below to buy one single options leg, the eBay $74 29 October put option. We're saying we want to buy and we'll change this back to one just like before. And we only want to pay a dollar and six cents or better. Now, remember, when we're buying options, whether it be a call or a put, we're always clicking on the asking price. If we want to buy a put, we click on the ask. If we want to buy a call, we click on the ask. If we want to sell a put, we're going to click on the bid. If we want to sell a call, we're going to click on the bid. So let's go ahead and talk about selling options for just one second. We'll go ahead and delete this order ticket out of here. 
Let's say I was bullish on eBay, but I didn't actually wanna buy a call option. I wanted to take advantage of that high implied volatility and I wanted to sell an option. Since I'm bullish on it, I'm gonna sell a put option. And let's say I look at the $73 strike put with a delta of 32, which means it's gonna expire worthless about 70% of the time. And since I wanna sell this option, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the bid price, 76 cents. You can see that it now highlights that option in a red box instead saying that I'm about to sell it. If I come down to the bottom order entry tool, you can see it says I'm gonna do a single leg option against the eBay $73 puts. I'm selling, let's say one of them again for simple math. And I'm using a limit order at 76 cents or better. Now 76 cents or $76 will be immediately coming into my bank account. And all I'm hoping for is eBay to be above $73 in just a couple days from now, 29 October. As long as eBay is above $73 a share, I get to keep that $76. If it's below 73 bucks a share, I get to keep the 76 bucks, but I may also end up owning 100 shares of eBay. Now, if we wanted to delete this out, we could also do the same thing on the call side. Maybe I have a 100 shares of eBay already in the account and I wanna sell a covered call against it. Let's say I wanted to sell the $80 call against my shares. I can see it's currently going for $1.35 by $1.48. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that bid price, $1.35. And if I already have 100 shares, this will automatically be a covered call. I'm saying I wanna sell the eBay 80 strike call option. I only have 100 shares, so I need to drop this down to one. And I wanna do it for $1.35 or 135 bucks. And that's pretty much it for options trading within this platform. If you already held a contract, you could always go back to your positions page, right click on it and say you wanted to create a closing order. It'll automatically generate the order ticket to close it out and you would just have to hit place order. So closing out open positions, very, very easy. It's opening new positions that can be a little bit tricky on here. Now, since I told you before, we will touch on how to create spreads in here. I will keep my promise. We'll touch on it just for a second. Let's go ahead and delete this order ticket out of here. And there are a few different ways that we could do this, but I'm gonna preface that I'm not a huge fan of creating spreads inside of Webull. If you wanna do spreads, I would really recommend probably going over to either like Tastyworks or Thinkorswim. Really any other platform is gonna make spreads a lot, a lot easier for you. But let's say we wanted to create a long call spread against eBay. We wanted to buy the 80, sell the 82 to make a long vertical call spread. One way we could do that is by clicking on the ask of the 80 because we do want to buy that one. Then we're going to come down to the order entry window and we're going to change this from a single option strategy to a vertical spread. Now the frustrating thing about this is it automatically puts in the option that we're going to sell. So you can see I'm buying the 80 while simultaneously selling the 81. Like I said a few seconds ago, I want to buy the 80 and sell the 82, but I can't easily click on this strike here. I've got to come down to the graph window right here and change the width from one point wide to two points wide. Then I've got to come back to the table and confirm it all looks right, which it doesn't. I've got to come back up here and change this to 80 by 82. And now you can see I'm buying the 80 and selling the 82, and it is creating a vertical call spread. And if we come over here to the right, you can see I'm doing it for a net debit of 56 cents or better. If I wanted to create a credit spread, let's go ahead and delete this out of here and start over. Let's say I wanted to sell the 76 by 74 put spread against uh, eBay for this expiration. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the bid price of the 76 because I do wanna sell that one. I'm gonna come back down here where it says single option and change it to vertical just like before. Just like in the previous example, it doesn't give me an easy way to change these strikes. So I've gotta come down to the graph again, make it two points wide instead of one. Come back over to the table and make sure I've got the right strikes. I've kind of already forgotten what I said, but I think I said the 76 by 74. So we're gonna go ahead and find that. And here it is. Now you can see I'm selling the 76 while buying the 74, all for a net credit of 63 cents or better. Now, if we delete this, there is one other way you could do it. You saw up here before, you could change this from single to vertical in this case, and you can see that the strikes are already clumped together. And in the case of the 75 by 76 put spread, if we were to sell it, we'd get 18 cent credit for it right now. If we were to buy it, we'd have to buy it for 48 cents. And if we clicked on that, it would automatically create the trade for us but I'd say very rarely are you gonna be doing just one single strike out, so you're always gonna to have to mess with these numbers right here, which can be a real pain on Webull. That's why I was saying before, I'd really just recommend you probably go check out Thinkorswim or Tastyworks if you're gonna be trading spreads pretty often. It is significantly easier to do it on their platforms. But that about wraps everything up you'll need to know to get started with options trading on Webull. Hopefully this answers all of your questions, but if I did miss anything, please leave any and all questions down below. Also, if you found the video helpful, please leave it a like. It really does help out the channel. And consider subscribing if you do like this type of content about trading or platform tutorials, that kind of stuff. But as always, let's all try to make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.